tell us who's gaining, who's losing power in the region. Uh, so Iran is not about to gain Bahrain uh, anytime soon. Syria, we were just discussing that it's, if it's going to fall and it's going to move away from the Iranian orbit, it's going to take time. Between that time and now, a lot has to change. Uh, there has to be a significant you know, geopolitical event. I mean, toppling of al-Assad will, will constitute one. Mm. Uh, but before that, I don't think that we can make a determination that who's gaining and who's winning. The United States is losing. Uh, that's unequivocal. Uh, there is a distancing from the United States and, and the capacity of the United States to use its leverage much less uh, than it was before the Arab Spring began. I don't think there's any argument about that. Secondly, to stereotype for just a second, there is an Iranian-Saudi struggle. We haven't talked about Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. but Saudi Arabia is really important uh, in this picture. And the third point is, I'm one of those who believes that this window is not open forever, despite the legendary patience of the Egyptian people uh, and others, that the economic challenges are enormous. The, any Egyptian government that comes out of this process has to create 10 million jobs if it's not going to disappoint the people who've been in Tahrir Square. And that is a virtual impossibility. I think the US is losing quite a bit. Uh, all the euphoria that surrounded uh, Obama has, has disappeared with his position on the Palestinian uh, statehood bid. Uh, if, in my opinion, Turkey is, is a clear winner. The, the level of um, fascination uh, that was there with the people with him, to see a man that was able from the Arab perspective to, to stand up uh, to Israel in a very firm and quiet way without a lot of propaganda, with a lot, a, lot, a lot of hype. The fact that he, when Israel refused to apologize, he forced everything with them was a huge uh, contrast to Egypt, uh, a lack of action at all when six soldiers were killed by the Israelis. Uh, so the, Turkey is, uh, is building up enormous uh, euphoria and maybe unfair expectations within Egypt. And it's presented to the Egyptians as an economic, as a possibility for economic collaboration. I mean, the way he articulated it is we are the port to Europe and you are the port to Africa. Let's work mm. together and make it happen. So if, if that actually works, uh, Turkey, if Turkey aligns with Egypt and it works well, I think it will change dramatically everything in the region. What is, to me, clearly the, the winners are the people of the region because they were empowered. They realized that they have, they have to be involved. And if they're not involved, a, you know, a, an elite will come take over and, and the, the cycle will continue, the cycle of corruption, the cycle of violence, the cycle of dictatorships. So I think there's a, there's a movement right now in the Middle East that is, is, is shaping up and it's going very well. It's going to take time. It's not something that happens overnight. I think the winners eventually uh, will be, uh, like I said, the people. Uh, Turkey, definitely a winner. Uh, the United States, to, be the, to dismiss the United States right now outright, I, I, I don't think yeah. that's, you know, to say that they've lost. Uh, they're losing for sure, but uh, this, this position can be recuperated uh, depending on what happens with Syria and what happens in Egypt because people are not talking about the American influence on Egypt and what, what they're doing in Egypt right now. It's, it's the quiet, uh, uh, the, the, the sounds of, of, of silence that worry me the most. Ali, you're in Washington and I'd like your sense of how, how much concern there is in the American capital over the fact that all of our guests here seem to agree that uh, America's influence in the region is waning. I think it is on its own doing because People talk about Saudi Arabia and it's leading a counter-revolution. Maybe this is surprise news to you, but the U.S. is doing the same. And uh, it, it did it in Egypt to the last minute, and it's doing it in Bahrain and in Yemen and uh, in other countries in the region where they have been uh, not on the side of the people. Obama likes to say uh, to be at the right side of history. Well, he is not on the right side of history when he ignores the issues in Bahrain and sells weapons to the Bahraini monarchy, does the same thing to, with Yemen and with Saudi Arabia and uh, even with Mubarak at the, at the, until the last minute. So here is uh, the thing. The U.S. has been dragged into uh, this with, by Saudi Arabia, maybe. Uh, and they're uh, careful uh, or care not to uh, insult Saudi Arabia or not to upset them has put them in the same side.